All right, my judges ready? All right. Joel Lovelace was just an ordinary guy sitting at his child's piano recital. That is, until the tones went off. In a moment's notice, Joel sprang into action. He quickly told his family he loved them, then left for the fire station. He did not know for sure when he would get to see them again, but he was certain of one thing, though. The orphanage was on fire. Joel is a volunteer firefighter in his community. To many, firefighters live and breathe firefighting. That is what they are paid to do, so they do it. The reality is, most firefighters are strictly volunteer and take time out of their lives helping others in need. Hello, I'm Zeke Webb, and I will be talking to you today about the realities of firefighting. I chose this topic for my senior project due to my involvement with the Willow Springs City Fire Department and the Tyrone Volunteer Fire Department. I volunteer in both of these departments and respond to calls when the need, when the need arises. When it comes to firefighting, the majority of the population may be limited in what they know about the subject. Many may only know what they have learned in grade school presentations, such as the Elementary Fire Prevention Week. Others may have their views based on what they have seen on various firefighting dramas shown on TV today. While what people have seen in these presentations and shows may be correct, firefighting itself holds in depth more possible scenarios and dangers than the everyday person may realize. There are many dangers involved in firefighting. Many consist of the obvious, such as burns, falls, or being struck by objects while working. While these are commonly thought of first when considering the dangers, they only accounted for 20% of on-duty firefighter deaths in 2016. One of the leading medical factors affecting firefighters today is cancer. Studies have shown that those involved in firefighting face a 9% increase in their chances of being diagnosed. Studies have also shown that those involved have shown a 14% increase in cancer-related deaths. The increase in cancer is due to heightened levels of toxic exposures that firefighters face on a daily basis. There are many harmful chemicals involved in fighting fires. Some of these chemicals, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, are present in all smoke. The largest amount of harmful chemicals come from man-made products in the home. Common items such as vinyl flooring or clothes can hold harmful chemicals such as benzene and formaldehyde. These chemicals are carcinogens which have been shown to lead to cancer. As of 2015, it was reported that there was approximately 1,160,450 firefighters in the United States. Of these, 70% were registered as volunteer. While this may seem like a substantial amount, it is becoming increasingly apparent to those involved that there is a decreasing amount of interest shown in younger generations. This may be due to the fact that volunteers are often subject to unpredictable schedules. This can lead to varying amounts of participation by those who are even very active in their departments. Another factor is the monetary effect of volunteer work. In today's world, it is becoming increasingly difficult to volunteer time that can be spent on work or earning income that is crucial for some. For many in younger generations, it is simply not cost-effective to volunteer their time. This is a troubling fact for those trying to find new ways to introduce recruits to their departments. For many departments, the only way they are able to stay in operation is cooperation with other departments. If the department has needs a tool that another department has, they can simply call on each other to complete the task at hand. Working together also allows the departments to cut costs. Departments can trade uh, equipment or gear for the firefighters to wear if they have something the other part the department needs. Working together also allows the departments to complete jobs quicker and more efficiently. They are also able to work together more efficiently due to increased familiarity with each other from working together. According to the International Association of Fire Chiefs, fire, volunteer firefighters are believed to be saving an average of $37 billion of the American taxpayer's money on a yearly basis. Even with such large amounts of funds being saved by volunteers, many departments across the country are struggling to stay open due to financial reasons. All across the country, departments are operating with insufficient funding. Because my research covered firefighting, I decided that I needed to find a way to connect this to a product that could help the general population and probably find a way to help those in need. While running through ideas with teachers in the school, the idea to host the Elementary Fire Prevention Week came up. Therefore, I decided to host a fire safety presentation with the Willow Springs City Fire Department to the Willow Springs Elementary students. While, running, while working with my mentor, Aaron Brower, and the Willow Springs City Fire Chief, Matt Foster, I was able to come up with a presentation that was suitable for elementary age children. Chief Foster informed me that the Willow Springs City allots a yearly budget of $1,200 specifically for the purpose of teaching the community about fire safety. With this money, we were able to purchase hats, 
pencils and stickers for the children to take home afterwards. The elementary also provided the time schedule that I needed to align my lesson plan with to be able to incorporate all the grades into the presentation. We would start out every presentation by showing the kids the gear the firefighters wear. This ranges from the special boots we wear to the air packs we use to help keep breathing in toxic chemicals while we work. We would use this opportunity to help the children familiarize with this look, all with the hopes that if an emergency does occur, they would not be afraid to seek help from us. After that, we would teach the, the kids about the importance of fire safety and what to do if they ever found themselves in a fire, as you can see in this video here. And the kids really seem to enjoy it too. Yeah. And we would end every presentation by showing the kids the fire trucks and the tools we have on it. Their favorite part by far had to be when we let them spray water out of the fire hose. Uh, the main struggle I faced with my project was in my public speaking ability. I had to create and perform a lesson plan to over 500 elementary students. This is something I have had no previous experience with at all. And because of this, I'm now more confident in my public speaking abilities and my confidence as a leader. And we'll go back to Joel Lovelace and his story. Uh, after a long 10 hours working the orphanage fire, Joel was finally able to go home. He arrived just before sunlight and was only able to take a shower before seeing his children off to school. After working straight through the night with no sleep, he prepares for another long day of work. Although it may be tough for Joel to live like this at times, he knows that everything he does is important to the fire department and the lives of those he helps. I hope after hearing this presentation, you might decide to try to make a change in your community by volunteering on your local fire department. Thank you. You might just have any questions. Mm -hmm. How much does all your gear weigh when you have it all on? Uh, just the helmet, jacket, pants, and boots is 45 pounds. Once we have the air pack, the mask, and whatever tool we may carry, it averages about 90 pounds. Are there any other questions? How about when you weigh it? <laughs> that can vary a lot. So do you plan to continue on volunteering? I do plan to continue volunteering. Uh, it's not going to be my main job. I'm planning on going to school for mechanical engineering, but I do definitely plan to do this. Where do you plan to go to school at? Uh, Louisiana Tech. I have a work cited page, but it's not clicking. Okay. In this case, I was wondering. Do you have to do any kind of um, physical training to stay in shape to do that? That's definitely an aspect that's important because that <laughs> is very tiring working along fire. Like I said in my example, you can be there 10 plus hours, it just depends on the fire. You need to be physically capable to be able to carry the weight of the gear and whatever equipment you may be taken along with. So being physically able is a very important job. How long did it take you to prepare to speak to the elementary students? That That's hard to explain really because really I, I had to prepare right up until the moment till because I've never done that before so I kept running through my head what I was going to say but I started preparing about a month ahead of time you know talking to Miss Brower and Chief Matt Foster and they kind of gave me examples of what they had done in the past and what would work good with the children. I think it worked out pretty well. Which was tougher, presenting to them or presenting to us? Oh, probably to them. There was a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, over 500. Any more questions? Is it hard to balance that with in school? Not really, because because this is just volunteer, so I don't have to show up to everything that there is. And they fully understand that school comes first. How many high school students are on the volunteer program? Right now, on our department, it would be three. Me, Joel Lovelace, and AJ Reeves. And you're all seniors. Yes. So that's the big thing is getting the younger kids involved. Because once we go to college, they are really wanting some younger guys to carry around all the heavy stuff. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any more questions? All right. Thank you.